when the gifts came in, they were said to you all, yeah. and not to you, Rob, mm -hmm. you all. And that means that John and I and Dylan get one. And Bill almost dislocated his elbow, reaching out and getting those before they could get past. So was... <laughs> yeah, you got to look out for yourself, John. This is a cruel world we're living hey, in. If the it's Ravens, the if the Ravens were able to hang on to the football as well as you hang on to those donuts, uh -oh. they, they may have won yesterday. It's gonna be a long morning for Dylan. D Dylan's already groaning. In there. Let's welcome in our guests on the program. They were with, candidates with, for office with, with the gifts from us. Actually, yeah, they actually brought the gifts too. Mm -hmm. They were candidates for office in this last election and came pretty close, considering. Uh, the Republican turnout and the margin of victory for every other Republican candidate, these two did pretty well here. Lucia Valentine from the 97th, Maria Russo from the 100th. Good morning to both of you. Welcome in. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks for bringing the refreshments, as they say. Bill's Absolutely. very happy. I got Italian wedding cookies last time I was in, so I had yeah. to return the favor. <laughs> yes. My son's wedding is this Saturday, oh. so I'm looking forward to a lot of those Italian wedding mm -hmm. cookies, by the way. I'm not saying you have to make them. I mean, there will be <laughs> Italian <laughs> wedding cookies at, <laughs> at the wedding. So uh, looking back on uh, this election, Maria, you were about six points shy, and Lucia, yours was about nine, mm -hmm. if I remember the uh, the election uh, totals from last uh, the, the, the Tuesday election. But uh, when, when you look at that and compare it to other Democrats did, you guys were at the top of the food chain there. Uh, was it simply the way the lines were drawn in your specific legislative districts, or was there something else that made your election that close? Lucia, let's start yeah, with you. That's a good question. I think that, you know, um, we really set out to um, engage with voters of all parties in the district. And I'm really proud that among the, you know, uh, Republican wave that we saw, my district swung left the most. So we swung left between two and five points. Um, and I think we're really proud of that, and we're proud to see that the message resonated with a lot of voters. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's an indication of where we're headed in the Eastern Panhandle and the momentum that we were able to gain. Um, of course, you know, gerrymandering, uh, you know, let's make no mistake that our districts are very heavily gerrymandered, and I think that, you know, that's a problem across the country. Um, and it really, you know, allows for um, us to see, you know, people on extreme sides of both parties be elected and continue one party rule. And so I really, you know, I'm disappointed to see that because I think that that's not really um, grounds for effective policy making here in West Virginia. And so I think that's definitely something that we knew we were up against going in. But again, really proud of the gains that we were able to make despite, um, you know, the, the odds kind of being against us. But we worked really hard. We knew we were going to have to work a lot harder. What was the registration breakdown in your district, Lucia? Republicans, Democrats, non-affiliated? Yeah, so the number of independents are growing. Um, so it's about, um, there were about 30% um, Republicans, about 30, 30, um, and then 40 with Republicans. And so independents are growing, and we wanted to make sure that we were reaching out to those folks um, who, you know, really, you know, are sending a message that they're disenfranchised with both parties. Mm -hmm. And so I think our message of, you know, working together to find common ground on local issues um, really resonated with those folks and really, um, you know, excited and proud of the relationships that we built with thousands of people across the district. Maria? Yeah, this is a great question. And of course, we are disappointed by the election outcomes of last week. But we're also so proud of the campaign that we ran in both districts. I mean, Lucci and I have been strategizing together um, from very early on in our campaigns. And I think that this was the first presidential election that we've seen with the new districts drawn the way that they were. And so to your points, um, those lines of the district definitely presented some difficulties. We knew the areas of the district that would be um, probably the areas where we already knew the most people or had the most ground running as Democrats versus the areas where we knew we would have to work the hardest in our districts. And we really went out there and we did just that. Um, so we really tried to knock on as many doors as possible. We had what we call, of course, a persuadable universe, which is really a group of people who we know that we can talk to and might be able to make some ground. And for both of us, that stretched across party lines. Um, it was not just Democrats because we knew from early on if we were only talking to Democrats, we were not going to win. And so how could we really show up as the candidates who were ready and willing to represent as many people as possible in the district? And, you know, I think in our races, we saw the positive outcome of that. We had races with, um, you know, about as close of a margin in the state as as we saw. And so I think that we um, just have to keep spreading that positive messaging and keep 
uh, representing our communities in the best ways that we know how. What was the voter registration uh, breakdown in your district, the 100th, Maria? Yes. So in District 100, the most amount of registered voters were independents. Um, so it was a slight, uh, just over one third um, that were independents, then Republicans, and then Democrats as the least amount. And I believe that was reflected in District 97 as well. Very similar. Bill. But the other way to look at uh, the districts is what parts in Berkeley County and Jefferson County does not pertain to you, Maria, but it does mm -hmm. to you in the 97th. Uh, how many folks are in your district are in Berkeley County as opposed to Jefferson County? Yeah, so the breakdown, um, District 97 is about 70% Berkeley County, 30% mm -hmm. Jefferson County. Um, we actually won Jefferson County. I, yeah, I know you did, yes. Um, and, you know, to mm -hmm. Maria's point, you know, we kind of went into this knowing precincts that were going to be more friendly um, and areas that, that we needed to work harder. And so that Berkeley County vote was definitely an area that we focused on. I live in Berkeley County now, grew up in Jefferson County. Um, and so we did a lot of outreach, a lot of canvassing in Berkeley County to try to, you know, make up ground and, you know, a, talk to everybody um independents republicans alike so yeah you you mentioned uh several times republican independent uh mm -hmm. in 26 there will be very be many a uh, less less number of independents and much more republicans mm -hmm. because the decision republicans have made to have a closed primary right, right. so there'll be a lot of folks whether they have have a Republican leaning or not, they're going to change to the Republican Party just so they can vote in the primary where all the action sure. is, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Johnny, did you have a sense of the messages you put out there, which ones resonated most and in retrospect you wish you had put, pushed harder on and which ones mm -hmm. you maybe pushed too hard on and, wish, and would rebalance? Mm -hmm. Either one, it's for both of you. One good at question. Time. So, um, I really tried to take a local focus in my platform and in my stance, and I know that that was um, uh, reflected in Lucia's campaign as well. And so I think that, you know, the issues that we were talking about were education, infrastructure, economic development. And, you know, when you go a little bit deeper on all of those, you come up to topics so like, lo like locality pay, um, better roads. And we were really hearing from people. When I would go on knock on doors, I would ask people, you know, what issues are top of mind going into the polls? And they would name a lot of those issues. The biggest one in Jefferson County that they would name is the growth. Mm -hmm. They were very... Um, shocked by how the county is changing and they were concerned about that and I heard that across the board um, so that was really my approach is to take a local focus now one thing I'll say about both of our races as well is that our opponents had a lot more of a national focus and so when we would go to forums and be in conversation that showed very clearly the differences of where we were focused and looking back I don't think I would personally change much um, because it was really never my intention to focus on the national issues. I didn't think that was going to get us anywhere. And so I was really trying to take a focus on bipartisan issues. I was just listening to um, West Virginia Public Broadcasting this morning on the way in. And, you know, they still stated that infrastructure is one of the most bipartisan issues still to this day. Because we all need roads. We all need water. We all need to make sure that we have those resources. So that's really um, where I focus. And I, I think that was important for the needs of our community. Yeah. Yeah, similarly, we really focused on local issues as well and really led with the message of unity and that we can, you know, work together to find solutions and really drew on my experience, you know, working in a bipartisan way to help pass legislation at the state capitol. And so I think people really appreciated the message that, you know, you know, looking at person over party and really looking at what we have in common and what we can accomplish together when we work together. And that when we break it down, a lot of these local issues are bipartisan. There are people that want to see locality pay passed and infrastructure in our schools improved. There's a lot that we can, um, you know, again, work together on. And I think people really appreciated that. They appreciated that we were all at their doors asking them these questions. We also focused on reaching out to people who hadn't, you know, voted in the past few elections who were maybe disengaged from the process. And so we had, you know, thousands of people tell us, you know, thank you for coming down like our rural dirt road and coming to talk to us. We hadn't talked to a politician or a legislator in years, if ever. And so I think that that was really, really important in building community around the issues as well and making sure that people felt heard. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And I think that that was an effective message that, you know, helped us, you know, move left. We didn't. Yeah. It's interesting. The right leaning side of our Facebook page has already gone right to DEI, open borders, abortion, <clears throat> you know, all of that. That's what right. they're already talking about right. here. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, do you think that the national messaging of the Democratic Party was a burden to you in trying to get out a local message because it seemed to be aiding the Republican Party mm -hmm. in, in their messaging? 
Is that is that a fair statement? I would say that's a fair statement, and I would say that it really supported um, our opponent's messaging, which was um, more on the extremist side. I know for me, um, for example, in the weeks leading up to the election, I got a few you know, mailers sent out against me, which is it's kind of classic in politics. I was ready for that. But some of the language that was used and the choice of statements, it was like, I haven't spoken on that issue at all. So how can you know we really even come to the conclusion that that's where I stand because I haven't spoken on it. And so I think that's interesting where it was um, the extremist and kind of uh, intense language that was used, I definitely feel was used against us. But I feel like instead of, um, you know, kind of going to that place and discussing an issue that might not even be addressed at the state level, we instead tried, like Lucia said, to kind of rise above that and say, let's focus on what's really important here. Let's focus on what we're actually hearing from voters and make sure that that voice is being represented. Yeah. But the, but I'm, I'm in the 97th in your, mm -hmm. your district, Lucia, and you had, uh, your opponent did the same thing for you, uh, accused you of, uh, of certain positions that you had not taken publicly. I don't know yeah. what you privately but you have not taken those public so yeah. both of you I think were a victim of, of negative advertising yeah. and I did not see it from I, again I did not see yours Maria but I did not see any negative advertising at all from you Lisa. no we made it really a point to run a positive campaign and you know I'm really disappointed in you know um, what we received from our opponents um, very you know untrue accusations but you know we we rose above and I think that you know the national issues are important, but we also really had a moment that we really needed to describe what's in the purview of a state delegate and a delegate role and what um, a delegate goes to Charleston to do and deliver on for our community. And so really making that distinction across the campaign was really important because a lot of people don't realize the, the role of the legislature and legislators. Um, and I think I think that's one reason why we, you know, didn't really um, lean into the national messaging because we're running for state office. And so while those are important issues, they were not in the purview of, of what we were going to be doing if we were elected. And this brings us back to, uh, to me, the basic question. Mm -hmm. uh, we often are critical of the Democratic Party, at least in this uh, time and space, of not having candidates on all the ballots. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democratic Party made a real effort this last time to have candidates. And I know in several cases, including the two of you, they had a very good candidate. You had someone that's articulate, uh, that's uh, eloquent, that, uh, as you said, you're uh, – you're working on statewide issues. Uh, you worked hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were a lot of fundraisers. You were a lot of knocking on doors. You made yourself very visible uh, and did everything one would think that would win the election. The bottom line, you did not win the election. Mm -hmm. And I find it hard to find a candidate more effective than the two of you to lose, mm -hmm. and so I, if I was a, 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 a with the Democratic leadership in the Eastern Panhandle, I'd say, what's the purpose of putting another candidate in? We did one of our best shots against opponents that we could have beaten, yet we did not. So why do we go forward? Bill, this wasn't meant to be a pep talk for them, was it? <laughs> no, 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 really. no, no, no. It's a, it's a pep talk. We, we, we're critical of Democratic leadership yeah. of not having candidates on the ballot, mm -hmm. and yet they worked hard this year, and they did not. Uh, they, they did not win. And I'm not sure what else you could have done. Well, let's take that to the next step then. And, and you look now in Charleston where all of the offices at the state level are Republican. In the Senate, it will be 32 to 2. Democrats have the 2. In the House, it'll be 91 to 9. Democrats have the 9. Yeah. Where does the Democratic Party go from here? And and should it even still exist in West Virginia? Should, should it uh, no, an alternate party to step up because the Democratic Party at the state level is apparently not wanted and uh, woefully ineffective at getting its message out to win elections in uh, at the state level, the House, the, the Senate. Mm -hmm. That's that's a, a big question right now because the party's become irrelevant in the state, Maria. Right. That's a great question. And um, quite honestly, it's a question that has been asked us many times, especially since the election. 
Um, and I can't sit here and promise to you all that I have the answer this morning <laughs> because I think it's a huge question that is going on across the state, across the country. Is And I, th I think the, the part we have to pay attention to is that this is a reckoning. I keep using that word. It's a reckoning because we're really taking a good look at what we have been doing and trying to figure out what of that has been working and what of that has not been working. Mm -hmm. And I think for both of us, you know, now that we have run the races that we have, and even though we did not win, we are being asked um, to still step up as leaders and to figure out that new direction for the party. And so I think that's going to be an ongoing process. Um, and I think it's an important uh, piece to name that, again, we really worked to step outside of the party and try to meet people where they were at and say, you know, we got some pushback for that too, right? People said to us, why can't I... Uh, why haven't you led with you're a Democrat? And I said, well, I don't think we should be leading with that across the board, right? I think we should be leading with who's the best leader, who is doing the best listening to the issues that you care most about. So we had some really positive conversations with people, and I think that made um, a lot of you know, a lot of impact on our races. But I do think this is the this is the question of the day. And I think time will tell as we, like Lucia said, we have some um, strategy sessions planned and some, deeper conversations for us to take a look at what the future direction is and where we go from here. Would yeah. you? And I think, you know, this election countrywide really showed us that um, people are, you know, upset with um, the current system and that they're, they don't believe in the status quo. And so I think that, you know, the West Virginia Democratic Party, as well as the national is really in a rebuilding period. And here at the state level, you know, we really need to be presenting an alternate vision for how our, our state can look. Um, and I think that, you know, I said this along the campaign trail, um, you know, in my lifetime, we've seen a state controlled by Democrats. Now we have a state controlled by Republicans. And I think, I think again, this one party rule is really, um, again, not grounds for good policy making. And I think that we need to be taking a look at the leadership that we're electing because we, we face a lot of the same problems and we need, you know, fresh um, creativity and fresh leaders and, you know, young folks to step up, young women to step up. We have the least amount of women elected in the legislature. And so I think those were all things that we were taking into consideration when running for office, knowing that the party is in this phase and that, you know, we have to uh, really push past that to, again, just connect with our local communities. We both grew up here. And for us, that that goes beyond party. This is to me, this is a fascinating subject that I'm about to get into because you're both young ladies, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and when you look at the recent election, a lot of people thought after Roe v. Wade was overturned, there would be a, a, a tremendous pushback on Republicans in this election. It didn't happen. In fact, more women than ever voted for President-elect Trump, despite the Roe v. Wade overturning. So does the Democratic Party need to take a more moderate view of abortion going forward? to become relevant once again in this state and perhaps nationally? Hmm. That's a good question. That is a good question. And I think, you know, we have seen over the last few years um, that, you know, the Overton window or the pendulum or whatever you want to call it has swung pretty far to the right. Um, I think that the messaging, as we discussed earlier on the show, um, had really reflected that during this race. And I think that it's really up to us to figure out where we fit into that. Do we also move further to the right or do we become part of the movement to try to move it back in the other direction and to try to find a little bit more moderate footing? And I think that's exactly what both of us tried to do in our races was um, to really take the common sense middle ground approach. We don't want to go extreme to the right. We don't want to go extreme to the left because there's a lot of people in the middle who I feel, frankly, are pretty unrepresented right now. And so I think that's really where we were trying to um, approach our races to just meet everybody else in the middle, the large majority of folks who are there. Um, and I think when we talk about reproductive rights in particular, this is such a difficult question. It, it came up so many times and it's being grappled with in the states right now. Um, and I think that, you know, West Virginia has decided where it stands at this time, um, and I think we just really need to keep listening to the people. And I, I had always said I, I would hope it went as a ballot referendum because I think people should have the right to vote on whether or not they want this in the state as opposed to being decided by maybe an extreme or, or further to the right group of folks, legislators. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have more to add. And people would say it was a ballot issue, I think, uh, uh, 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. I would push back a little bit by saying it was an economic 
aspect to right. the ballot. It was right. not. It was a question mm -hmm. who funded it, exactly. not what it should be. In, uh, allowed you know, I, exactly. I think part of the problem that Democrats are going to face in the near long term is the nationalization of media and the reality that Donald Trump won 70 percent of the vote in West Virginia and Kamala Harris only got 28 percent of the vote. Mm -hmm. um, the national issues are overriding all of the local issues. We don't have local papers anymore. We don't have local television stations anymore. The local television station I watch is from Washington. Mm -hmm. So uh, until there's a big idea mm -hmm. from the National Democratic Party that resonates in West Virginia, I, I think there's a real hard time for the minority party to get a message out there because the average voter, I think, goes in and votes the R's or they vote the D's. Yeah. And until there are more D's than R's, right, I mean, then the, 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 that's just yeah. the outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be very frustrating to, to have the better idea that just can't overcome the national noise. Sure. We have 60 seconds left, time to wrap it up here. Final mm -hmm. thoughts, Lucia? Um, you know, I just really thank you all for having us on this morning. I think these are all really important questions to be asking and conversations that we need to be having. Um, and I just really couldn't be more proud of the work that we did, um, how close that we came and, and our message of unity and working together. And, you know, I think that, you know, uh, this wasn't about one election cycle for us. This wasn't about, um, you know, moving here to run for office. This isn't a game to us. We're from here, you know, went to college here, want to raise families here. Our families are here. And this is our community that we care about. These are the people that we care about. And I couldn't be more honored to have met, you know, thousands more people that I now get to call friends and neighbors and really listen and try to bring their voice to the table in whatever way comes next. So Maria, 20 seconds. Yes, thank you all so much. And like Lucia said, this is really a movement. Um, we were building uh, a positive change, um, a positive movement for people, and we'll look forward to continuing to build that for our beautiful state of West Virginia. Thank you all. Thank you for coming in well together said. this morning. Much, much appreciated there. That's great. Thank you. <laughs>